In this lesson, we will examine the duties of the ICAO member states. You will recall that the aims of the Convention on International Aviation, and thus the aims of the ICAO, are to ensure the safety, regularity and efficiency of international civil aviation operations. Therefore, the primary duty of each member state is to achieve these aims. However, these aims are achieved by ensuring that member states comply with the standards and recommended practices that have been issued by the Air Navigation Commission. For completeness, we will define what is meant by a standard and a recommended practice. A standard is anything which is considered necessary for the safe regularity of international aviation and to which contracting states will conform. Whereas, a recommended practice is anything which is considered desirable, as opposed to necessary, for the safe regularity of international aviation, and to which contracting states will endeavour to conform, as opposed to will conform to. The 18 annexes to the Convention contain the standards and recommended practices, and were established after the initial consultation with the contracting states. The standards are considered binding on the contracting states. However, if a state wishes to opt out of any particular standard, it may do so, as long as it informs ICAO, who in turn will publish the non-adherence as a difference. This difference must also be published by the opt-out state in its own Aeronautical Information Publication, or AIP. Although the general duty of ICAO member states is to comply with the accepted standards and practices, there are a few particular duties that are worthy of mention here. You will recall that some of the original aims of the ICAO were to also further the aims of free trade and to expedite the movement of international travellers. States have remained free to impose their own controls on these aspects of air operations. But the ICAO has laid down some governing principles that contracting states should adopt when establishing international airports. These measures are designed to help expedite and encourage civil aviation. The ICAO has extensively studied the issues surrounding taxation and requires contracting states to follow its recommendations. States are asked to exempt fuel, lubricants and other technical consumables taken on an aircraft in a state other than the state of registry, providing the consumables are for consumption in flight. They are also asked to undertake the expeditious passage of aircraft, crews, passengers and cargo, especially in the areas of immigration, quarantine, customs and clearance. Within the areas of custom duty and excise charges, the Convention also asks states to reduce or eliminate the taxation of profit or income from air transport enterprises. Annex 9 of the Convention requires states to implement procedures that allows for expeditious handling of goods and cargo intended for import or onward transmission. The establishment of free zones is encouraged. Arriving aircraft, departing or crossing the territory of another state, will be admitted temporarily free of duty. The privilege, however, does not apply to anything taken off an aircraft, except for spare parts for other aircraft from another state. There are a few more duties of the ICAO member states that need to be mentioned here. The first of these requires that all contracting states apply standard procedures for the registration of aircraft. All aircraft are required to be registered, and the standard identifies the format of registration marks and the nationality symbols, including where they are to be displayed on aircraft. These registration standards are found in Annex 7 and will be dealt with in further lessons. Similarly, with aircraft registration, states are also duty-bound to ensure that all registered aircraft are airworthy and are issued with a certificate of airworthiness. Annex A to the Convention deals with the airworthiness of aircraft. Again, you will study this in a later lesson. In the same manner that aircraft are fit to fly, member states must ensure that aircrew have had the training and are issued with standard licences. Annex 1 of the Convention deals with personnel and licensing, 
including flight crew, air traffic controllers and aircraft engineers. Another specific duty worthy of mention in this lesson is the duty of member states to comply with the standards for the safe carriage of dangerous cargo. Annex 18 of the Chicago Convention details extensively the technical instructions surrounding this activity. Finally, member states are also duty-bound to specify what documentation is to be carried on a commercial flight. Documentation must include Certificate of Airworthiness Flight Crew Licenses load sheets and maintenance documentation. This completes the lesson on the main duties of the ICAO member states. Remember that essentially the duties of the member states are to comply with the standards and recommended practices set out in the Annex to the Convention.